Hey everyone, it is yet again time for another fun computing class uh, through introductory introduction to data analysis. Um, today we're going to be talking about R in our studio. So I hope that you've had a chance to download R, download our studio, so we can get, you know, move along and, and keep going with it. But in case you haven't, um, here are the instructions again. Uh, so what you're going to do first is download R. Uh, so go ahead and go to this link right here, cloud.r-project.org. And when you click on it, it'll bring you up this wonderful website. Um, you're going to pick whatever operating system that you have. So if you have Linux, um, either Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, or Ubuntu, uh, you click here. If you have a Mac, you click here. And if you have Windows, you click here. And when you click here, it's going to give you this page. Okay. And what you want to do is go ahead and click uh, the, not the top level notarized and signed version. So when you click this and a Mac, it's going to download for you. Okay, and then when it downloads, it goes into your downloads folder, which we know we're not going to work it, but it's okay to store stuff like that. Uh, double click it to open it, and it's going to go ahead and install, drag this install screen out for you. Okay, looks like this version is called Kick Things, which is pretty awesome. Continue, continue, agree, continue. Install. Okay, so it's going to ask you for your password. So go ahead. Oops. Helpful if I paid attention to what I was doing. Installed software. Okay. It's going to work on writing the files and installing the software, stuff like this. Not that big of a deal. It goes pretty quickly, so we'll just go ahead and wait for it. This is actually updating my version of R as well uh, because I was on the old, old version here. So it's always good to install a new version. How's everybody doing as we're waiting for R to install? Yeah, this is a good time to pause your video too if you like need a snack or wanna work, but here we go. Uh, the installation was successful, always good to hear. We can move that to trash. Okay, get rid of that. And so then you're done. Okay, let me show you what it looks like uh, base R. So R is separate from R studio. We'll talk about what that means in just a second, but this base R is going to be this little R graphic here I'll have uh, that I have right here. And the console just looks like this is going to say your version, kick things, um, and all of this information about that. But that's basically, uh, this is basically R uh, itself. Um, but what we're going to use instead of just R itself, uh, yeah, we don't want to save that. Uh, we're going to use a wrapper called R Studio. So what I want you to do after you've done the R part is go to this link right here and download R Studio. So I'm not going to, I'm going to show you what to click, but I'm not going to click it because I already have R Studio downloaded. Um, but you want to go down here to the desktop free version, okay, and download it. Uh, and then it's going to probably uh, 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 detect what operating system you're running, and then you just have to click this button, uh, download RStudio for Mac. Okay, so and follow the instructions, just like we said, to get R. Okay, so now that we've got that, um, and then open RStudio to get started. So I have RStudio right here. Can bring this larger. I've put it in my dock because I use it quite a lot. Um, but you don't have to have it there, of course. We're going to go ahead and open our studio because we're going to use a bunch of our studio this time. And it's opening up on my other screen. I'm just dragging it over here. OK, so one of the things I'm going to do is switch back and forth in between the slides, this PDF and our studio. And we're going to talk a lot more about our studio. I'm going to put myself down here. Here we go. We're going to talk a, a bunch more about what these wrapper things are in just a second. OK. So going forward about R. So R itself is a high level interpreted language designed primarily to run statistical tests and visualize data. Okay, so uh, a lot of other languages have specialty functions like MATLAB is really good at linear algebra and things like that. Uh, Python is like a, 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 your minivan version of uh, a programming language. It's really good. It's not particularly fast. It's not particularly amazing, but it's very versatile. You can do a lot of stuff. R is like kind of a, a weird 
weird one. Okay, so it's it's mostly um, developed to use, run statistical tests. So a lot of people use it for statistics. It's based on the language S, which is not used anymore. But it's a uh, this has a lot of historical um, uh, holdovers from S. Uh, it's free, open source, which means that anyone can access the base code at any time, all the way down to the compilers. So what we talked about, um, translationing that uh, sort of human readable language into the binary that the computer actually needs to function. So you can read any part of that code all the way down to the compilers with this language. This is not the case for a lot of languages like MATLAB where all that code is proprietary and you can't see it. Uh, the base R code is written in C, C++, Fortran, and more R, which is makes it a little bit weird. Um, C, C++, and Fortran are all different types of uh, coding languages um, that you may have heard before. But this is what the base car. Uh, this is what sort of R runs on. It's uh, what's under the hood, so to speak, of R. And then more R, which is a little bit on the weird side, which makes R a little bit on the weird side for a computing language. But um, we love R and all its quirks. Uh, interpreted language. What does this mean? This means that you don't have to worry about compiling machine code. So like we said, you take this human readable code, which is really easy for us to stand uh, to understand based on the way that it works. Um, and it actually compiles that down into binary code automatically. Uh, for languages like C and C++, that's not the case. You actually have to use specific compilers in a separate step to compile that code together to make sort of an executive uh, executable um, uh, uh, binary file that the computer can actually run. But we don't have to worry about that with R. When you hit run, it just compiles it for you really fast and uh, runs it really quick. Um, R installations come with a simple command line inscriptor, just like I what I had showed you here with R earlier. It's super duper simple, um, and but it's it's a little bit intimidating if you're just starting out to have that sort of thing. But R Studio really helps a lot, and so I used to teach in Base R, and I've really migrated to R Studio because I think it's really really useful. Um, it's what's called an integrative. Uh, development environment, an IDE for the R language. So it's not R itself, which you have to download and install separately, but it's basically this wrapper that has helpful features and makes it a little bit easier to navigate. It makes it a little bit easier to like, see what's going on in your environment, what's in memory, how things are controlled, what's your history and all of this stuff. So it just makes it a lot easier, even if it's not the programming language itself. Um, these are all the helpful features, and we'll go through these uh, individually um, here, but it has all these really super helpful features, and that's why I'm a big fan. Um, some of the things get a little bit on the buggy side when you get really down into the weeds of it, but you all won't have any sort of trouble. It's really great to learn um, how to code on, so that's our studio. So let's take a tour of our studio, and I have my R studio open here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can kind of see both. Okay, so here's our studio. Um, you can see I have a, a screenshot of this R Studio with a little bit more stuff going on than here, just my base thing. Um, but let's take a tour of this. So you have the command line console right down here. So this doesn't have a script open right now, so that command line console just takes up all the space right there. Okay, so uh, you also have a script editing window. So if I want to open a new script here, that like we'll do in just a few minutes, uh, you can have this little script editing window, which is really great. You can run any of the scripts. Okay, so it didn't have anything here, but it ran it for me. Um, you can also source, so run the entire script at the same time. Uh, you can run each line. You have a lot of uh, flexibility with how you choose to run this, but this sort of stuff doesn't automatically get run um, in the script window. So you have environment variables. Environment variables, this is gonna be so important for understanding what's in your memory. Remember how the difference we talked about last, last time, uh, storage versus memory. Um, memory is the stuff that's gonna be show up in your environment for, for R. So you'll under, kind of understand uh, what you've put in this environment um, and what's in your memory by looking at that tab. I think it's really great. Regular R doesn't have that. And it's really hard sometimes to like remember what's in your environment, what you told it to do, what you haven't told it to do stuff. So that's really, really great. Um, you have your current R project. So for these R projects, you can see I have a bunch of R projects, which is really cool. Um, 
our projects are going to be something that we use to we're going to use to simplify, uh, organize, and uh, generally make things a lot better uh, um, going forward in the course. Okay, so we're going to have that pretty soon. Okay, so you also have all of these tabs over here and all these tabs over here have a bunch of stuff. The first thing that opens is sort of the file system navigator and that's files. And this is like a really nice GUI interactive thing um, that tells you kind of where you are, uh, it tells you what's there. Um, regular R doesn't have this, you have to man, uh, sort of command line hop into the files, but uh, here you have it. And in this more, you can copy, move, do basic, uh, basic finder um, shell GUI types of things. You can also go to your working directory and then set your working directory if you're in a different directory. So if I go to my desktop, it has all this stuff, but just because I've navigated there doesn't make it my working directory. I actually have to, if you say go to your working directory, it goes back up to where I was, but you can set it here as well. So you can set your working directory and it just gives you the line of code for doing that. Okay, so it's it makes it really easy. The other thing is a plots window and integrated plots window. So you, when you make a plot, it shows up here. Um, uh, packages, so we'll talk about installing different packages for R, which is really helpful as well. Uh, the help we'll talk about a little bit later and then a viewer, which we don't use, the, the we won't use that very much, but it's there. Okay, so that's our studio, quick tour of our studio. Um, so the first thing that I want you to do is adjust your preferences. So R has this really weird thing where it wants to save all of the stuff in your environment for your workspace and we don't like that. We don't. We don't. We don't want that when you're starting out. We want every, you to open up with a blank slate. Why is that? Because if you're working on different projects, um, maybe you have a, a, a project for one class or project for another class. Uh, you don't necessarily want all the junk in your environment from this class to be in the environment for this for the other class too, right? So we want that workspace to be a clean slate when you start over. The other thing is you often forget what's in there and what's not, um, what, uh, what you've defined and what you haven't. So starting out with a clean slate is really good. The second thing is when you give your code to me to, to score, right? Uh, I'm going to start with a blank slate. So if it if uh, you don't start with a blank slate, your code might not work for me, which is not good, right? We want everything to be really replicable, really reproducible. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go open our studio's preferences and here are the two different ways to do it. On a Mac, you go to the top bar, our studio and then preferences. So it's gonna be up here. Um, in Windows, it's the top bar and tools and then options, okay? And when you do that, we don't want to save your workspace. So uh, you go to general here in options, and then you're going to uncheck that box that says restore.r data into workspace at startup. And then you're going to change the next thing to never. We never want to save our dot data uh, on exit. This is what I uh, exited uh, on basic R. Um, I got out of it and it asked if I want to save my workspace. Changing this to never, just you never see that prompt again, which is you know low key annoying anyway when you need to. To do it. So uh, you can see from mine, if I go to our studio and preferences up here, the preferences are going to say this is going to be unchecked and this is going to be never. Okay. So you sit, hit apply and then okay and you're done. So that's great. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about using command line. This might be the first time that you've ever used command line. Let me get rid of that. Don't save. Um, this might be the first time you've ever used command line and that's totally fine, right? Everybody's got to start somewhere. And so we're going to do this right here. The blinky cursor thing is called a command prompt. And we want to make sure that that's highlighted because if it's not highlighted, you're not going to be typing into the right app, right? Um, and when you do this, you want to put your cursor here and enter something. Um, so here you can try two plus two as your very first R command. And you'll notice a couple things about this. Uh, you'll notice, first of all, that you have an input. That's a two plus two is your input that you're giving R. And then the output is going to be four, the result of that calculation, right? So R can function as a really basic calculator. I actually open R all the time just to do basic calculations uh, because I'm, uh, I understand it so well, it's easier for me to use that than um, the calculator in uh, Mac OS or on my phone, um, which tends to annoy me. So uh, that's really good. But right now, I just want us to hop on here and like, let's just make R do some errors. Okay, so like, it seems weird, 
that I would want you to intentionally force errors on R. But here's the thing. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to make some errors. I make errors all the time constantly. I'm constantly doing things that upset R. It's fine. Um, even though I always know, may always know I look or, or look like I know what I'm doing, right? Um, I want you to desensitize yourself to this because it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Uh, don't worry about errors. You'll be able to work through them. I can even count the number of hundreds of thousands of errors I've made. We all work through it, okay? And you're not gonna break anything. I promise you mashing on the keyboard, making some errors. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It's it's really not gonna, going to break anything, okay? Boop, 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 boop. Okay, see, like it really doesn't matter. Okay, those errors are just are trying to communicate to you that you doesn't really understand what you want and what you want as output. Okay, so it doesn't understand the input. Um, so go ahead, take a minute, check your understanding. Can you make R do errors? <laughs> Which seems silly, but errors are good. Errors mean you're trying. Okay, errors mean you were trying. Feel free to swear at R. I swear at R, swear at R all the time. I swear like a sailor around R because it doesn't do what I want, even though we'll, we'll see why that is. Uh, and I really don't care, and neither does R. Like, it's just a computer. When I say I'm upsetting R, it's not actually getting upset. It's just a, it's just a machine, right? Um, I'm getting upset at it. But, you know, it's learning how to part code is actually a really huge part of it is just learning how to be frustrated and tolerating being frustrated. Uh, it's totally okay. It's totally normal. Um, I'm frustrated all the time. Okay. It may not seem like that, but uh, coding frustration. One of the cool things about coding though, um, and I feel like this is really similar to math, is that when you're frustrated for a long time and you finally get it, you get this big rush of like, oh, I did something right. That's such a great reward. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you feel like you're really consumed with frustration, that's a good point to just put it down and come back to it later when you're in a better headspace to kind of deal with it. Don't let yourself get so frustrated that you start hating it, okay? That's a choice that you're making by continuing to do something that's not working. Put it aside, either get, you know, either put it aside and come back to it because sometimes just like math problems that works pretty well, uh, or just come get some help. One of the reasons why I'm flipping this class at, at first is that I don't want you guys to get really super hung up on this. So all of the stuff that you're going to do, you know, if you're doing something during the lecture when you're reading it, just write it down as it didn't work. Come bring it to me. We'll help. Uh, we'll help uh, get through it, um, debug that code, and get you past our errors. Okay. So don't feel like you have to stew in your own frustration. If you're too frustrated, just put it down. All right. That's really good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about R as a calculator, though, because it can do some pretty fancy things. Um, it acts as a basic and scientific calculator. There's lots and lots of calculations you can do on it, and there's lots of specialized functions that R has just in the base package um, that are really actually quite useful for, for everyday kind of work. Well, if you're me, everyday sort of work. So it can do addition and subtraction, two plus two, two minus two, gives you the correct output. It's always a good sign. Uh, multiplication and division, you can use an asterisk or a star for multiplication and a, a slash, a forward slash for division, okay? Um, and it goes by typical rules uh, in uh, of uh, operation, uh, order of operations rules. So if you do 14 divided by seven plus two, it's gonna give you four because 14 divided by seven is two plus two is four. Um, but if you want uh, 14 divided by seven plus two, you have to put it in parentheses, right? Um, this is, you know, back to, to algebra, like pre-calculus, um, high school math, uh, that sort of thing. So just be mindful of uh, the order of operations that you'll need to do for that. Exponents and logarithms, it will also do that for you. So uh, the caret um, will give you an exponent. Uh, you can do negative exponents, you can do fractions, but if you do fractions, just be careful to put those in parentheses. So here, if I wanted to do six, the square root of six, you can do six caret, uh, one over two, right? And that gives you the square root of six. Um, so just be careful about that, uh, that order of operations uh, business right there. Um, you can do logs and logs in different bases uh, providing this argument. So the log, I think it will do a log base 10 for you, but if you wanna do a log base three, 
uh, then you just include that as an argument within the log function. This is a function, right? This is a function. Um, it takes certain arguments. We'll talk about functions in just a second, but uh, this is a basically how it works. Uh, you also use E notation. Just note that uh, E negative eight is gonna uh, produce uh, that. It'll just uh, translate that really quick for you. Um, if you do E's, you can do negative, you can do positive. Um, and then if you get make a number too long, it's gonna automatically convert it into scientific notation for you. So I think is useful sometimes and sort of annoying sometimes, depends. Okay, now is our as a calculate, uh, now that we've talked a little bit about R as a calculator, you're starting to pick up that there are certain things you can do that make R produce the correct output. And there are certain things you can do that is just going to not work, okay? <laughs> and so a lot of this, especially as you start out, is learning what's called syntax in R. Syntax is a set of rules that define what various combinations of symbols mean to the computing language you're working with. So syntax is different for every language. In fact, that's mostly what you're learning if you learn different computing languages. All computers, of course, act the same. They, they operate basically in the same ways. But the way that you're interacting, the way that you put input into the, the computing language often differs uh, quite a bit. Um, each computing language, again, has a different set of rules that you can arrange symbols to tell the computer what to do. Uh, so here's an example of some output that I've given to command line. Um, you can see 2 plus 2 equals 4, 2 space plus space 2 equals 4, 2 tab tab plus tab tab 2 equals 4. So part of the syntax of R is that you can put spaces and tabs in between elements um, of calculations. And it doesn't really care about that. It's called white space. And it's often a really helpful thing to do when you're coding in a script. And you'd like to just visually break things up to make sure it's not all this super dense, hard to read code. OK, so um, understand white space. But really, these elements need to be in the correct order. So if you do 2, 2 plus, it's going to be like, uh, you want to do 22 plus what? And so when you hit this and it gives you a plus right here, it's waiting for more input. It's like, you're not done. Give me more, give me more, give me more. And so I had to do a 2 to, to, to make it happy. And then it gives me 24, which is not what I uh, originally wanted with here. But again, the elements need to be in the correct order have these things in the correct order and that's part of syntax okay uh here's another thing where you can imagine writing a function that that adds two and two um or, or it takes two two and then adds uh separated by commas but that's not the syntax that r has it's like i don't know what you want me to do with all these things unexpected comma two comma what what's happening okay so just be mindful of syntax and really honestly uh a lot of the errors at first, especially at first, are going to be syntax errors. So make sure that you just fix it. So you understand uh, you're telling things in a way to R that makes sense to it. OK, so if you get a wrong output, that might also might be a syntax problem and stuff like that. But just make sure um, at first uh, the syntax is correct. And you're going to pick up a lot of syntax as we go through this, right? We're practicing good examples. You're going to do things incorrectly. You're going to get an error. Um, you know, if you don't understand why you get an error, uh, good thing to ask me, ask your person say ne next to you, things like that, or just write it down. If you're in uh, the lecture right now, and you don't understand why that last one doesn't work. Just write it down and ask it at the beginning of class. Okay, some tips for using R. Remember that computers do exactly what you tell them to do but not necessarily what you think you're telling them to do, okay? So I love the Picard tips. Uh, this is from Star Trek Next Generation. I'm a huge Star Trek nerd. It's gonna come up. Picard programming tip, a computer is like a mischievous genie. It will always do exactly what you ask for, but not always what you want. Sorry, somebody's trying to call me. Some spam is trying to call me. Um, not always what you want, okay? so. A lot of the disconnect, a lot of what's frustrating is because you think it, you're telling it one thing and you're actually telling it to do something else and it's doing exactly what you're telling it to do. Okay, so computers really only do what you tell them to do. Um, I love this yelling at my code for not working and computer doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Like that's really 99.9% .9 of the issue. Uh, it's always your fault. It's always my fault too. Uh, that's just how it goes. But keep that in mind as you go through. If it's if you're putting in an input and you're expecting some output and it's not giving you that output, 
you're telling it to do something and it's doing that thing, but it's there's a disconnect between those two. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you go through. And again, a lot of the errors, especially first, are just going to be syntax errors. <laughs> so you're going to think is you're telling it to do something and you're actually telling it to do something different. Um, so just go through really carefully and and uh, pick apart what you're what you're trying to tell it. Okay, so let's try a check your understanding. So I have a R, have R calculate. I want you to go ahead and pause this. Have R calculate the square root of 164,956 using the square root function. Okay, what is the correct output? So go ahead and pause, put it in R real fast, and then come back. Okay, have you done it? All right, so these are your options. 106 or 406. I have a little bit of dyslexia, it's going to pop up to uh, 12.8 something error, unexpected input error, <laughs> two arguments past the square root, which mean, which requires one. Okay, so let's talk about this, which is the correct answer. It's going to be A. Okay, so the square root of that number is 406.1478. That's great. If you got the correct out, uh, output from that, that's really, really good. But let's talk about these two errors because um, I was trying to figure out how to make this not work. And so I came up with two ways. One is I used the sign, the square root sign um, that you can find in special symbols. Uh, and even though I understand what that means, and you probably understand that that means a square root sign, uh, yeah, R doesn't know what that means. Um, so it returns an error. It's like unexpected, like what on earth do you, what on earth do you mean by that symbol? I, I, I have no meaning across that. Okay, so remember uh, that disconnect between what you think you're telling it to do makes sense to you and how we understand symbols, but R, you know, plays by its own rules. And D, so I put too many numbers in the argument. So you can see the square root, I put the number, but then I also put comma two. Uh, so that is feeding it two arguments and it really only wants one argument. So it's gonna be like, I don't know what you want me to do with that other two, that's like whatever. So it's gonna give you an error. So this, it, it's telling you really clearly what you need to do, which is get rid of one of those arguments. Okay, so you can get rid of the two and then it'll run fine. Okie dokie. Okay, assigning variables and objects. So you'll notice that when we did this two plus two, like two plus two over here, right? It's giving you an output, but it's not actually putting anything in your environment. So it's not storing that in the memory. It's just reporting this output for you, which is useful, but sometimes you want like stuff stored because you want to use it later. So we're going to talk about assigning variables and objects in R. Um, Assigning variables or objects. Uh, objects can be a variety of things. Variables are, are sort of a type of object in R. Um, you have basically two methods. I mean, you have more than these. We're going to talk about two today because I don't want to overwhelm you. Uh, first, you can use what's called the assign arrow, and that is the less than symbol and then a dash um, and then a number. Okay, so it's like an arrow pointing this value is going to that variable. Okay, so you always want to use. Um, the thing that you're trying to define and then the value you're trying to give it. Okay, so then that works. The other thing you can do is use an equal sign, which is pretty, pretty basic, right? And you'll notice that I'm putting spaces here in between these things. You don't need to, you can do, you know, without spaces. This just makes it sort of nicer and more readable. And it, uh, it's, it's actually best practices too. So practice doing that if you'd want. Um, uh, for historical reasons, uh, the assign arrow is actually the preferred method for assigning stuff into your workspace for assigning variables. The equal sign is preferred method for arguments and side functions. Why is that? I don't know, but it's historical reasons. So the, when people were doing this, uh, writing our programs, this is just how they started doing it. So this is how we should probably do it too, because it'll make more sense later. So when you assign these variables, you'll notice that they show up in your environment. Yay, great. And so now when you say A, it's going to recall A and the output's going to be the value of A right there. Great. Yay. Okie dokie. Your environment is telling you what's in R's memory. Okay. It's not everything in R's memory, but it's the stuff that is relevant to your uh, interests. Okay. During your, your session on R. So remember, uh, this is should be empty. So if I restart R really fast, which you can do by going up to session and then restarting R, 
you'll notice that that environment empties out. Okay, so be careful because now if I do A, uh, it's not found. Okay, so that object isn't found. So we have to re, and I'm just hitting the up key here to do past things to load that back in the global environment. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so let's check your understanding again. So again, Put the video on pause, go ahead and do this. And we're gonna see. So syntax is important here. Using a space between the lesson symbol and um, the dash will change the meaning of the command, right? Because those things have meaning separately, but when they're used together, they have a different meaning. And this is why syntax is so important here. So try each of these. Do they have the same result? Why or why not? Okay, if any of them have different results, go ahead and write it down and write down why you're guessing um, each one has a, a different result or doesn't have a different result. Okay, so go ahead and write that down. Do you have any questions? Uh, we'll talk about it in class. Does it matter which way the error points? Try these. Which works and which produces errors? Okay, say why or why not there, and we'll talk about it in class. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to do our first R script. It's so exciting. I'm very excited for you all. So what you want to do for your first R script is you're going to go up to this little plus sign right here, or you can go up here to new, new file, okay, and R script. Either way, they do the same exact thing. We're going to do an O script, and it's going to produce this amazing, empty, very intimidating document for you, which is empty, right? But this is your first R script. Um, the window is a script, it's ready to code. And you so you can write a couple things here. So we can do a hashtag, my first script, and then leave a blank line and say print. Hello world, which is the classic thing you start off with when you code, okay? And so now we're gonna save this and go ahead when you save it, make sure that you're saving this, okay? As um, something with the extension dot R, dot capital R, first script. And it's gonna automatically save it wherever your working directory is, which is fine, okay? So let's, let's actually go ahead and make a new folder and say, um, practice here on my desktop, that's going to be fine. And we'll save it in there. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to, oops, we got to refresh that. There we go. I'm going to go in here and set this working directory here as well. Okay. So I'm setting that working directory. We'll talk about what that means in a little bit, but here's your first script. Okay, your first script, let's talk about the different things in the script editor that are really helpful. First of all, these things on the side are called line numbers. This is the first line, line two, line three, etc. This is really useful because it's going to um, reference specific bits of code, so specific lines of code, which are the sort of base unit by which R evaluates things. So you can run this line, just run, right, um, and print, run that line, run this line, this one, Okay, uh, and it prints for you out uh, the next line. The other thing that's useful is this is gonna show up in error messages. So if you get an error message, something's not working and you don't know where because you have this big script and it's a hundred lines long or whatever, uh, it's gonna actually tell you what line is there, uh, the error is occurring at so that you can, that helps you go back and debug that later, okay? Um, here at the top, uh, my first script is a comment, a comment, um, is anything in R that happens after that hash symbol, okay? Uh, it's skipped by R. It's actually not evaluated at all by R, which is really useful because um, and it appears in this like lighter green than the hello world. Uh, it's really useful for documenting your work. So you can put stuff like uh, this is how you print things in output. Okay, so you save that and it's not you can see that if I run that line, um, it produces this line, but in the output itself, it's ignoring everything after the hash, hash, uh, hash symbol, hashtag. Uh, 
So it's really useful for documenting your work, right? So that's all that. Um, you can have as many empty lines as you'd like. Or just skips over them. They're like, yeah, nothing to do here. Go on to the next line. Um, here's a function. Print is a function. Um, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay. So I'll let you get caught up there. So functions in R. Let's talk about this because we need to talk about syntax because syntax is really important. Um, it's important to know what functions are available in R, but it's also really important to learn the basics of how they're set up. So functions are little bits of code that you can run by calling it, or and they can be written either by someone else if you do a package or in base R, or you can write them yourself, and we'll cover that in this class as well. It's it really it it saves a lot of time and energy when you write your own functions. Um, the syntax of an R function here's our hello world is a function name or call, right? So you want to you know let R know what function you're trying to use. Um, and that's how you call the function. And then parentheses, this is really, really important, that parentheses is after the call is how R knows that thing print is a function that you want to call. So the, the parentheses afterward says the preceding word, the preceding object is a function. Go look in your functions. Um, for that specific function and run it, okay? If you don't put the parentheses, uh, then what happens is it tries to call it as a variable, like as a value, and that's not gonna work because uh, it's sort of a problem. So print, okay, uh, versus print, okay, whoops. It's like, well, I know that's a function, but I don't know what you wanna do with it. Here's the like, this is actually the physical location of it on the hard, hard drive, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's just like, oh, well, it's a function. What do you want? <laughs> so uh, always use those parentheses, OK? And then you have arguments. So this uh, hello world is called a string. It's in double quotes. And that's a single argument that that uh, function takes. And arguments are options that you'd like to pass the function. So if you want hello, if you want something printed, you have to tell the print to the argument of what you'd like to be printed, you know, square root, you pass one argument and that's a number you'd like the square root to be taken of, right? Really, really easy. Um, you can use a function. Let's go ahead and use a function to create a vector. So you can do a vector pop. And this is the C function is called uh, concatenate. And basically it takes all these separate things and concatenates them into a single vector. Okay, so we can do one, nine, eight and two. And each one of these arguments are separated by commas in R. OK, so this is one, two, three, four arguments right here in this thing pop. That's really useful. OK, so there's our function. You can see it shows up here as a numerical string, which is great. Yay, it works. Um, use another function to calculate the mean of pop. So you'll do mean pop, mean pop. And there it is, five. Yay. Also works. Yeah, you no notice that we're not assigning that to anything. So it's not showing up here, but it is giving us the output of the mean, right? You can test nest functions within each other. So you can do mean C. So you're creating a vector inside the mean, one, nine, eight, two. And you should get the same answer, which is five, right? Because it's the same vector. And functions can have many arguments separated by commas. OK, so this is blep. And it's actually creating a sequence of numbers, blep, a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10 by, so the step size is 0.5. And so here's blep here. And so if I say blep, because I want to see it, it's each one of these, right? So that's a sequence. And so each one of these from, to, and by are arguments, one, two, and three, all right? So those are your arguments there. Uh, R also has what's called lazy evaluation, which means that you don't have to specify from equals this, to equals that, by equals this. You can actually just put those in order. And as long as they're in order, uh, it'll just be like, mm, I think you mean from, to, and then by. OK, so that can get you in a little bit of trouble, uh, but uh, R is, is, is classically lazily, lazily evaluated. Now, how many argu arguments can a function take? That depends entirely upon the function and how it's written. OK, so square root, we already know, takes one and will not take other arguments, right? But C, the concatenate function, will take as many arguments as you want to give it. One, two, you know, 
you know, as many as it can handle. And I can't remember what that number is, but it's like many millions of numbers, right? If you want to do that, uh, uh, sequence uh, takes, I think, I think that it takes three, although it takes a different number of them as well. So you can have a different thing besides by, you can have linked out, linked dot out, which means I want you to go from one for two, but I want the total length of the vector to be this, this many, okay? So uh, it all depends on how the function is written. And so part of programming is just learning what are options for your functions, what arguments do these functions need and stuff like that. Okay, so check your understanding. Uh, what happens if you enter the numbers into mean without the C or like this? What happens when the dead? Why does it do that? Okay, here's your computer. <laughs> like it, it, it doesn't do what the previous thing did, right? Why is that? Write it down. Write down your thoughts. Maybe you need to hit pause real fast and like write down what you think it's happening. Please do. Okay, when things go sideways, use help. So let's say uh, you have this function mean and it's giving you some uh, nonsense maybe, it's not doing what you think it's doing. Help document, uh, documentation exists for each function in R. So that's really, really good. Okay, so let's talk about this. The help tab right here in our studio is really good. So it's uh, telling you the last thing that I search for help, which is the uh, Butterworth filter on some signal signal data issues that I had to do, but the home topic is going to look like this. You can click on any of these things for getting help, manuals for different things, uh, references to packages, all sorts of stuff about our news, all that stuff right in there. Um, but if you want help on a specific thing, you can always search right here for mean, okay, and it gives you mean and it will give you a help documentation. You can also go into the command line and do a question mark and then mean, and that pulls up exactly the same thing, okay? That's really good. Uh, this works on specific functions. So if you have specific functions um, and you know the name of the function already, uh, you can help pull up the help documentation on that. Uh, just in case you forget the name of a function and maybe you wanna do a keyword search instead, you can do a keyword search by doing two question marks in a row and doing mean. Okay, and when you do this, it's going to search through all the help packages and anything with a mean um, keyword, it's going to return each one of these things. So this is lots of means, right? There are a lot of means here. And if you click on one of these means, base mean, it takes you to that file, that help file. And the help file is going to give you the usage. So it's going to say, okay, you can use X and then a bunch of other optional commands, which is this dot, dot, dot. Uh, it has uh, the X argument. So this is an R, it's gonna tell you what type of object it needs to be, okay? Uh, a numeric or logical vector, okay? Date, time, intervals, complex vectors are allowed for trim equals zero only. So if you wanna do a complex vector, we'll talk about this later, you have to do this option. Trim, um, na.rm, which is really great because it removes any not applicable or not found variables within your um, data set to, to do the mean, for, so it ignores those NAs. And then it gives you more information about the values, uh, references, um, if you want to read further on it, and that. Uh, so, and also you can see related things down here, and it gives you an example that you can run. Okay, so that's all about help doc documentation. That will help you out uh, doing um, when stuff goes sideways and you're not really sure how to work a function. Okay, so functions in R, why does it do this? Now, go ahead and look up that help documentation or read it for arithmetic mean and see if that doesn't help with understanding why this works, this doesn't work, but using a C within it does. Okay, so go ahead and write that down. Okay, so some more R tips. First, use scripts to document your code during lecture. Please don't use everything in command line because you can't figure out what you did later, okay? Use it in scripts. Oh, and you can do it, it's so easy. And then here you can do, if you'd like to run one line, you can hit this run one line, okay? And it'll run this line and then go to the next and you can run that line, okay? Uh, you can highlight it all and run it, run it all, okay? Um, B equals three, you know? And then you can say, this is how to assign variables, 
right? You can write notes, all sorts of stuff, what works, what doesn't work. Actually, notes on what doesn't work is prob are probably just as valuable as notes on what does work, right? Because you're learning how to do that syntax. Um, Avoid using command line. Again, put it in a script because you're going to be happier doing stuff in a script. You can run it just the same uh, as writing it out, but you're going to have a record of what you're going to do. It's going to be reproducible. You know, once you've forgotten a couple of days and come back, it's going to be all there for you. Make sure to write code that's evaluated top to bottom without errors, unless, you know, you're making notes about what doesn't work and then you can do that. But what you do, you can source this code, which will run all of it uh, top to bottom bottom, but if you're doing something like, oh, you know, I want to do a mean of A of A, and then A is going to actually be this 2, 3, 5, 50, 5, 1 vector, and you can run it like this, right, and then come back up here and do this mean, but if you source the script, uh, you know, if, well, you have to have a clear session, right, so we're going to restart this R, so I'm grading your homework, right, I get the script, I'm running on an empty environment, I source it, oops, it doesn't know what A is, right? Because you're not defining A until you get to line seven, but you're trying to use it in line five. Please be careful of that, right? This might be sort of a problem. So what you can do is move that, just make sure you're running something that's referencing A after you define A, uh, right? And now if you run it, um, it's going to work just fine, okay? And it calculates that mean just fine, okay? So make sure to do that. And uh, before you turn in homeworks, really good idea to go ahead and clear out, restart your session and source it to make sure that it works without errors, right? Because that's like a silly way to get a homework returned. As unsatisfactory, I can't run your code because I just forgot to like run it through one quick time to make sure everything was down, right? Okay, and you'll probably get pretty frustrated. I promise guys, it's totally normal totally normal. Uh, that's fine. Just put it down and try again later. This does mean that you can't wait till the last minute to do your homeworks. Like that's going to be problematic uh, because I'm not going to be up at 3 a.m. helping anyone. I'm going to be asleep. So <laughs> um, I'll try to help you when I can. But again, plan ahead because a, a lot of times this stuff, just like, oh, the mean was ahead of here and you're in a bad mental space and you're just like, run, run, run. Why don't it run? Why don't want it run? Uh, have a sleep, have a shower, you know, eat some food. And they're like, oh yeah, well, of course it doesn't know what that means. So, and you uh, fix it really fast, but give yourself that chance because if you're not giving yourself that chance, it can get really frustrating really fast. Okie dokie, that's it for today. Um, uh, I have an assignment 1.5 that you'll need to do uh, to review the content in this course. And again, that's C-level work there, 1.5. But I also want you to read the book, chapters three, four, and six for next time. Seems like a lot of reading, but I promise it's going to go by really fast. Uh, go ahead and work through the examples, and we're going to do some more stuff in class. All right. So thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for watching the video, and I will see you in class.